Well, hello, everybody. It's Brother Todd with your Victory Minute, and I hope you guys and gals out there are all having a great day. Uh, I want to go ahead and apologize in advance for the wind. I'm down here in a pretty good little bit of wind, and it's it could be blowing, but, but whatever you do, I want to ask if you would, give me at least three minutes today. Don't don't, don't don't shut it off for any reason. Give me at least three minutes. I want to talk to you about something that affects your life uh, and, and, and something that you can, you can grab a hold of and, and do something with real quick, okay? I don't want you to shut me off while I'm doing my, my, my initial ramblings around, okay? All right, let's make a deal on it. Well, this video today was supposed to be about how to pray for your friends, your relatives, acquaintances, and neighbors, and getting them to come to Easter, getting them to come to the Easter service. And it was primarily planned to be around that. But as I was praying about it and, and thinking about it, uh, and about like Easter time, uh, I keep using the phrase with Easter, a, a time to come back and a time to come on, okay? To come back, uh, back to church or get back into a you know a crowd praise god looks like the covid thing is kind of laying back a little bit on us uh not get back to a normal get back to better than it's ever been kind of thing and then you know of course to come on uh some of y'all you've discovered us out here online or, or you've had friends every now and then you know they, they they ask you to come to church and you've thought about it and uh and and easter's a great time to come on and you know we want to we want to be intentional in the in the things we do and I, I, Monday I was talking about your, your friend your friends your relatives your acquaintances and your neighbors uh, and I still want you to do that I want you to pray for them now I'm gonna give you the quick one pray for them by name pray for them by need a specific prayers get specific answers and that's true across the board okay if you pray for people by name it'll endear you to them you'll care about them and when you pray by need you know, the old preacher used to say, general prayers get general answers, and specific prayers get specific answers, okay? So I don't, it's not that I don't want you to do that. It's just as I was thinking about coming back, uh, I got to thinking about, man, what a year we've had. You know, it's about now is about the time, all, about a year ago, this time of year, is about the time we started noticing people sick. We had, you know, weird things happening with people even in December, uh, uh, all, all that kind of stuff. And only God knew, you know, we were going to go through this period of not having church services for five or six months. Some churches still aren't able to have it and all of those kinds of things. And, and the challenges that 2020 was going to present. And he said, now, Brother Todd, I already know about the challenges of 2020, Bubba. I've been dealing with them. Well, that's what I want to kind of talk to you about is what do you do with a challenge? What do you do when you get that challenging can I use the term opportunity? A challenging opportunity. If you look in the Bible and if you look in history, you will see that some of the greatest people that ever lived were facing things that were absolutely overwhelming, okay? As you looked at them, it didn't look like there was any way. There's things that, that around here at the church, just as we think about our local ministry, that. Uh, my goodness, man, if you'd told me, hey, Todd, this is what you're going to face, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I mean, I might y'all might have to put me in a straitjacket. I don't know what we've done. But what God did was he gave grace in every opportunity. The reality is, without, for instance, the COVID-19 reality, our, our Internet uh, expansion, uh, the people that we have that are connected now to Christ and, and, and to our church, uh, in, in different countries all over the world. Some of y'all are watching in different countries from around here. I get comments. I get, I get, I get noticed people to tell me, hey, man, you're, you, you said this. Hey, you did that. And I'm thinking, I don't know who this is, right? And so, uh, but it, they'll be talking about a victory minute or something from online. The reality is, is, you know, all of a sudden that thing hit. We know what we was going to do with money, but we knew there was an opportunity, right? to reach out into out into the world out out into out into cyberspace okay and because people were pretty much locked down to just getting information from their phone so what do we do okay we can't back up from it you know, brother Ty, what we're going to do for money doesn't matter we got to get this done this is a chance and so what happened is lord have i've spent more money as a senior pastor or i've kind of okayed because i don't know nothing about the technology stuff but i've kind of okay guys I, yeah i'll stand behind this with the church of, of, of buying technological equipment like we've never bought it before. Why? Well, because of the opportunity. The challenge is there.
but the opportunities. When you think about, think about like King David, King David walked out, he was a young man, probably no more than a middle-aged teenager kind of thing, right? He, his daddy sends him out to check on his brothers who are, who are uh, engaged with the Philistines. 40 days they've been out there. Now, nobody knew what was going on, but there really hadn't been much fighting. Goliath was walking out on the field from the Philistines every twice a day, and he's talking to the children of Israel, and he's telling them, you know, y'all come down here and fight me and send a cha champion. You know, 1 Samuel chapter 17, if you don't know the story, everybody's heard about David and Goliath. Well, what happened when David got there? When David got there, he heard the Philistine. Everybody else still hiding in the ditches from him. And oh, and David goes, hey, uh, what's going to be given to the man who kills that guy? What are you talking about, David? I'm talking about what is the king promised to whoever takes that guy out? You following me? See, David's, yeah, it's a challenge. But of course, he was believing in his God. He knew God, God, God had helped him overcome a bear. It helped him overcome a lion. He, you know what? Figure he overcome a giant too. His 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 perspective was so heavenly. He spent time with God. He wasn't impressed with people, right? And I'll tell you something right now. If you'll spend time with God, you'll you'll get to where somebody somebody fame that's famous and 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 rich and all that don't mean nothing. They're just another human being. And so because it's who you're spending your time with. When David saw a giant that everybody else was convinced was going to kill him, David saw an opportunity. Think of the Apostle Paul. He's standing in, he's standing in front of the governor. He's standing in front of the king, right? Okay? Oh, Festus and Agrippa and them. Uh, and he's got the case won. He's got the case won. He, he, they're going to end up letting him off, Okay? And what does he do? He was a Roman citizen. And as a Roman citizen, he had the right to appeal to Caesar. Like, as Americans, we think we have the right to get to the Supreme Court. We used to. We obviously don't anymore. We learned that here after the election. But anyway, so, uh, <laughs> get too political with you. But anyway, and so and so, what, what, what they could do is ultimately appeal to Caesar. It didn't mean you wasn't going to be a prisoner until then. So he's standing there, and what does he tell him? He says, I appeal to Caesar. And, and the governor tells oh, 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 uh, uh, Agrippa, he said, you know what? This guy probably been let go if he had an appeal to Caesar. And what did, what, what did the governor tell him? You, under Caesar, you've appealed, and under Caesar, that's where you're going to go. Well, Paul was wanting to go to Rome because the Holy Spirit had already let him know, I'm going to take you to Rome. He said, don't you get disheartened. You, you're going to preach at Rome. And so Paul is trying to find figure out a way to get God's will done. So here he sees a prison ship. Guess what? They put me in chains, but they're going to carry me to Rome. Do you see what I'm talking about? Where everybody else, maybe in the room, would have been pulling their hair out. Oh, no, no, no. I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be a prisoner. I don't want to have the bad times. But what did he do? He saw the opportunity. Thank our own country. What did, what did George Washington do? He's right there. It's, it's about Christmas Eve, right? 1776, I guess it was, maybe 1777. I think it was 76. So the English had brought in this group of mercenaries, these German mercenaries, these Hessians, right? They were some kind of soldiers, right? And so, and so he's planning him a little sneak attack. So what does he do? Christmas Day and the day after Christmas, if I remember right, and I want to say 1776, but y'all don't hold Brother Todd down to it. It's been a long time since I took history class. What did he do? He used bad weather. He used a frozen river. He used a, a Christmas holiday, right? He figured them old German boys probably over there drinking them a little cold beer. You know how they, they drank a little bit, right? And he'd use night, and he would, he would sneak across. He took bad weather, uh, an opportunity to have low morale from his people being gone from their families on the, on the holidays, right? He took an overwhelm. He's dealing with an overwhelming force, right? All of this stuff was known. What did he do? I'm going to take this challenge. I'm going to turn it into an opportunity. And a great battle was won. And a great victory was given and pretty much established the, the army so that it could go on and fight out the rest of the Revolutionary War. Are you following what I'm saying? Challenges become opportunities. I'm standing. I don't know if you, most of y'all wouldn't recognize where I'm at right now. I'm over, standing over some real rough country that the church has. It got kind of God worked out a way for us to get it. We just run a bulldozer through here about a year or so ago. Okay, what I'm looking right back behind me, where I got my finger pointed, is one day going to be a big tank. And down here in Texas, we call it ponds, lakes, tanks. Okay, you get you a big enough tank, you got your little 
poor man's lake, all right? It's gonna be a little poor man's lake out here, but it's gonna run all the way up down to the old railroad track over there. And what you're gonna see all over here, this is gonna be a campus. It's gonna be a campus. We're gonna build a campus in here uh, for the school. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna build it like a like almost like a small college where it'll be it'll be cottages, and we'll we'll move, we're gonna we're gonna run everywhere from 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 daycare all the way, uh, preschool, not daycare preschool, all the way to uh, to twelfth grade. Okay, when this thing all broke, we didn't even really we weren't sure exactly what direction we were going to take. Are we just going to try to keep it in early elementary and those kinds of things and uh, try to get the, the, the kids ahead whereas they moved on? But things happened in the state. Uh, I was a school board member. Uh, they were pushing this uh, transgender stuff. You couldn't fire somebody. Showed up one day as a guy, as a teacher. Next day he says he's identifying as a woman. You can't even let go of them. All that kind of stuff. It's the way the whole thing's gone. And I just, that was my line. I'd had enough. That was, that, that was the answer for me. I said, that's it. Now, then the immediate question, what are you going to do? Middle of a COVID pandemic. How in the world is this going to expand? Where is the opportunity? Well, what are we seeing now? What are we seeing now? We're seeing Christian private schools are going on. 90% of everybody who's in a Christian private school went to school every day. That's what we've seen here. Okay. And we got first graders now reading on fourth grade levels. What's going on? You, you, now you, what's going to happen? The state hadn't even took any kind of uh, uh, achievement test or anything. Well, they're afraid of it because the whole thing's been a royal disaster, right? So look at it. What I really, when I first looked at it, thought, oh, my Lord, what are we going to do? Because th this whole thing financially is going to put us behind. It's going to put the whole program behind. How in the world are we going to overcome in this? In a lot of ways, guys, the challenge has made the opportunity because everybody's seeing it. Are y'all following me? You're gonna have challenges in life. It doesn't mean God doesn't love you. Jesus had challenges. The apostles had challenges. The 12 sons of Jacob had challenges. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Noah, you name it. Just keep looking at it. Look at the challenges Mary overcame, that Deborah overcame, that Ruth overcame. Are y'all following me? You're going to have great people are known by the challenges they overcome. Remember, the Bible says we are more than conquerors. That's, that means we're more than the victor. It means we are in the process of victory. I'm going to tell you something. I never was much of an athlete, but I won some games and lost some. Okay, won some championships, lost some, all that kind of stuff. All right. When that victory is done, when it's over, that's exactly what it is. It's over. It's over. I remember we was in a deal one time, had an undefeated season. Everybody comes up jumping on me after the, we won the last deal, last pitch is thrown, last strike's called. Everybody's jumping up and down. And I remember standing out there by third base thinking, well, okay. Now what? Now what? Because it's not just the victory. It's the process of the victory. That's where the excitement is. It's in the overcoming. God has made us overcomers. And so we are naturally going to continually be facing challenges. Y'all following me? Challenges can be heartbreaking. Challenges can change your life. Challenges can change normal. I, I see the reality of death change people's normal every week. Every week without exception, for 30 years. There's nothing as challenging as going through grief, but there is victory in it. There's power in it. There's, there's nothing like going through loss. There's nothing like going through change. There's nothing like losing that job you thought you were going to have. There's nothing even sometimes like the marriage not working out. And you're like, oh, this whole thing has just come unwound. And yes, Guys, sometimes old Satan and them's group will kind of dictate things and move things and get people listening to them. And what the, what the, the old Satan and them will mean for destruction, God can take and work for good. When he said, I, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, guys, is not a lie. It's not just something we tell ourselves to get through tough times. You are undoubtedly facing challenges in your life right now the, the 2020 made it inescapable for us all not to have challenges we've all lost we we've all got grief 
we've all got difference. We don't know what's going to happen. It looks like our whole, our whole, our whole system doesn't work anymore. It's obviously God almighty. I mean, I don't even know if there's a mind in anybody in any position of power either side right now. I mean, come on. What's happening? Okay. As God moves us in these last days, what are we going to do in this generation? What are you going to do in your generation? What are you going to do in your life? Yes, there's challenges, but baby, I'm going to tell you something. God will give you grace. God will give you power, and you'll overcome them. The greatest victories of your life may be coming out of some of the greatest challenges. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to shut up, but if you'll look at people that come out of bad and difficult situations, there's, they come out one of two ways. They either come out absolutely overwhelmed, uh, embittered, uh, jaded, or, or that limp they have, that scar they have, becomes really their, their point of glory. What the devil means to destroy you, I'm telling you, God Almighty can give you great victory. And what looks like an overwhelming obstacle may be what God is presenting you with so that you have an opportunity for faith and you can move forward. I got a deal coming up here in the church. I've been mentioning it a little bit here and preaching. Uh, we've been talking about it. Pastors been talking about it. Lay elders, we've been praying about it. Trustees, lay elders. And we've been, we've been talking about it, praying for it. And you know what? Let's put both feet in. We don't really know what's going to happen. We don't really know how God is going to give victory. But I'll guarantee you one thing. I ain't backing up. I ain't backing up. Life's too short. Life's too short. I would rather fail falling flat on my face than to, to have to retreat. I don't want to land on my backside. I'm not going to not overcome in life because I hid around hoping that the devil wouldn't find me. You just got to go get it. You just got to go do it. You got to believe God or not. You got to confess it or not. But what I came today to say, and I've been rattling on here, it looks like for 20 minutes, is you're, we're all facing challenges, and you may be facing some significant ones. But look at that giant and look for that opportunity for promotion. Look at that prison ship and go, hmm, I'm making get God's will done through this. Look at that frozen river. Say, so, you know what? Might be a nation come out of that. You following me? You got challenges. You make the decision that you're going to let God take those challenges and turn them in to victories. All right? Hey, love you. Hope you have a great day. And uh, I hope one day you can see it with me. I think before I, before I pass on, if the Lord tears is coming, I'll see it across this land and over here, something that can't be explained. A church, a school, an impact in a community, a culture, and even in a world where we see a power in God's people, a change in the culture, and where we see influence and power in places in the world we got no absolute business being. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go catch some of the sermons I preached out of 1 Kings chapter 19. Love y'all. Bye-bye.